Hello and welcome to this special edition of Italo Talks for the Frankfurt Book Fair, Bookfest Digital. I'm Jesse Muscassinda, Managing Director of Mozambican Publishing House Etale Publishing. My guest today is James Morua, literary blogger, writer and journalist from Nairobi, Kenya. James, welcome. Thank you, Jesse Muse. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me on your on, on this uh, talks. I'm really excited. I've, I've been following them and I know that they are really, really useful talks. So thank you to, to you and your team. And uh, thank you for those who are streaming in and watching wherever they, they, they might be. Today, we are going to be discussing how European literary institutes and publishers can strengthen collaboration with African literary industry, recent growth in literacy levels, internet penetration and literary um, industries in general uh, present an opportunity to strengthen collaboration. So James, here is my first question. What are the most exciting developments today in African literary industries that you follow? So the, the question you ask is about exciting developments. And there have been many exciting developments. One of the most important of these developments is the, the, the way that um, the industries have been networking together in ways that have never happened in the past. In the past, we had people who are in their little, in their little, um, in their little silos, developing their little book industries, but in the last decade or so, there have been more cross collaborations between people um, as they do festivals, as they do anthologies, as they do uh, literary prizes. And uh, that's, I think that's the most exciting part of the an exciting new development because we, we are seeing um, festivals uh, like uh, the AK Festival which um, in 10 years before would never have had, uh, would, have, would have had just Anglophone writers uh, and maybe one or two from other language uh, families, but now we have, you know, mixes, a mix of, mix of more. So I think the, the collaborations between the African literary communities is the most imp important development, in my opinion. Is there more collaboration now across the continent than before? Yes. It's the collaboration, the, the collaboration we're seeing now is unprecedented and it's been driven by technology. You know, we have social media, we have digital media, and this allows people to communicate easier and faster. And for those who might have had a problem communicating, the, most of these social media has, have, has translation services. So you don't need to have, uh, um, you, don't need to, you don't need to speak French or Portuguese or, or even German. If somebody sends you a message, there's a way of translating it over the internet easier. So the, these are some of the things that have, have fueled the new, the new, the new uh, communication between uh, people across the continent within, you know, within the language, language groups and even within the groups within the community. Like so, even within Anglo Africa or even within uh, Lusophone Africa, there are people who weren't speaking, but with the technology, they're able to communicate and uh, get their ideas across. What challenge remain in the industry? The, the main challenge is we really don't know what, we, what a literary industry for a continent as big as Africa should be. It's a huge con con continent okay. with, um, with um, 53, 54, 55 countries, depending on who you're asking. There the, are... The, over 2,000 languages spoken on this continent. So although we always sp speak about the European languages, but uh, they are not even by, by far, like there are very many languages spoken on, on this continent. There are many challenges of trade. So you find if, if for instance, I was to publish my book here in Kenya, um, it would be easier for me to send it to, to Europe and then send it to, Lego, to, to, Soma, to, to Somaliland. It would be easier for me to send it to Somaliland via London than to send it from Nairobi to Hargeisa. So there are, there are barriers, physical barriers, 
their tariff barriers, their language barriers. So it's it's there's still a lot of challenges right now. So while we want to say that you know that you know there have been there has been progress and there has been a lot of progress, the challenges are still there. You know the barriers are still there, and they need to be surmounted for the industry to grow. I would like to to ask you what uh, European institution can do to support African literary literature or African literary industry development? Number one thing for me, uh, of, of course, money helps. Uh, a lot of the a okay. lot of the things. It's a yes, question a of investment. Are running on low budgets, so. You're looking for organizations that are looking for fund for donations for funding to to continue in their own you know to continue in their own um, uh, to continue in their own ob objectives. Yeah. So I mean, I have magazines, I have publishing houses, I I know of bloggers, and a lot of them have to self fund a lot of these activities. So uh, considering to donate to these organizations is one. Another option is, is to give options for training, either A, in the technical aspects of the business they're in. A lot of people don't have, like, like, like a lot of people, we don't have very many good editors for manuscripts, for instance. So you, you always need good editors. You always need people who know how to write better. So there are, there are things like that, you know, technical assistance for the people who on the ground who will be doing this work. And then, of course, um, another aspect which would be interesting for me, I, it's something I'm, I've been thinking about, is you find that people who are in Anglophone uh, world don't speak in French or, or Portuguese or Spanish or German. And um, people who are in Europe, if, they, if the Europeans would teach them their languages, so if I'm speaking English and then somebody uh, says, okay, we are going to teach you French, it will go a long way to helping uh integrate other people so share the languages that you have we'll worry about our own languages uh, but if you get to share language your language that, that's another way so those are some of the ways there are very many ways so donations uh, technical assistance uh so fellowships for the, the people who are trying to do the work that needs to be done and uh, and then of course share your languages and uh, by share your languages, I'm talking about the major languages. So um, people in uh, what is considered Francophone Africa, I'm sure they would not complain too much if they're taught the opportunities to learn English, you know, and, and get opportunities in English. And um, uh, yeah. Oh, and last one, uh, uh, translators are very important for people in this industry. So if you can get the translators to, you know, to, to, to you know, we get more and more translators, you don't need as many people to speak the language. You know, the translators will translate the text. What different institutions can do in terms of uh, digital infrastructure? That's a really difficult question because um, there is a physical infrastructure of producing books uh, or producing, you know, different titles. And um, most different, most countries have different, um, different ways of handling that in in one country like let's say nigeria they really encourage printing locally in in, in kenya you can easily you know you can easily produce out of the country and import it because it's cheaper so there is no one way um that you can you can help with the physical infrastructure that i can think of if this is actually a new one it, it's it's country by country you go to this country. Um, I think the South Africans print uh, are print, printing very well at reasonable costs. So the physical infrastructure, you have to go country by country because everybody has a different and unique uh, uh, way. You know, their, their their industries are unique and different. Some are bigger. Some are just you know. Some is a cottage, cottage industry. It's not a big industry. On the digital side, I always believe that. Um, one of the problems we have is while we want to help what we want to do is we want to use the the infrastructure that's already there the the, the unless 
before before you get to the advanced level of say we want people to start doing their own work like i'm a i develop websites before i started writing so i'm i'm better placed to to do this kind of to do that kind of work so on the side of the digital infrastructure if you can find a way of tapping into whatever people are already using whether it's it's facebook whether it's uh whether it's instagram whether it's twitter whether it's whatpad there are already platforms that are being used and um i i actually would suggest that instead of thinking of getting them from that uh, getting a new platform you need to go and get them where they are and get them from there so i i i really like whatpad whatpad is a platform where a lot of african writers are actually producing work and uh, it goes nowhere so this is one of the ways to really think about that one is you know go into whatpad look for the african writers and you know if there are people who are really exciting you want to offer them you're not going to give them a manuscript deal but you can say okay why don't you submit to one of my journals here in uh, uh, some of the journals that are known and and that's how you develop the the society so go where they go where the people are and then uh, develop them from there yeah, from there okay uh, james do you think that uh... African literature represent a commercial opportunity for European publishers. Short answer, yes. There is an opportunity here. Um mm -hmm. a lot of people like thinking that um because we are all now very digital savvy and we are all, all using uh social media and uh, we are doing all these things a lot of africans do not have these things it's not as mainstream as we want to imagine number one and uh, and this and there is a lot of people who would be interested in getting this books uh th this products this literary products and even those who have those devices um if the devices are available and uh, the 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 content that is being produced is in line with the aspirations of the people of the of the space so i'm in kenya if i'm going to read a story about somebody who was in kenya or you know like um there's a this there's, there's a story that was written by a kenyan blogger uh about called the uber driver and it well and went viral very quickly because this young man had written wrote a story about the things that many people in Kenya are familiar with and it became actually a, it also went across the continent because we are all familiar with you know an uber driver and the adventures the things that go around that so if the content is available and it's easily it's it's it's, it's able to be distributed to the people they will consume it so the opportunities are there the opportunities are in the devices getting the devices to the people because um as much as we have done a lot of work in the last 10 15 years to spread devices and do a lot there's still very few low cost devices available to across the continent devices and then not just devices but the books themselves as long as you're able to get books which as which have um, which the people which have content that deals with people's aspirations they will get the these books so opportunities are there is that you need to be smart you need to be and you need to be patient the the reward will be at the end okay and those opportunities includes uh, books uh, written in african languages those are actually really really re that's a really big space um like the nigerians uh, have have a long tradition of uh, house literature we have uh, literature in, in east africa like kiswahili literature so those african languages they are they are opportunities so you uh, i know for instance i've been following the the coastal region of kenya and uh, kiswahili is blowing up as a language because of, partly because of kiswahili blowing up as a language across the continent and across the world there is suddenly a need for more kiswahili uh, kiswahili books kiswahili poetry kiswahili essays so the opportunities are growing every day i mean my 
a colleague told me how somebody who was a translator has, suddenly does it has too much work they they have to keep like uh, uh they can't keep up with the with the demand for their work so the languages are also an opportunity so the opportunities are many whether it's in the languages whether it's in the infrastructure the thing that uh, we have is unfortunately the industry of publishing in Kenya, in africa the whole of the continent has been severely underfunded for for a generation so whoever would come in would actually be coming in in an industry that needs that that needs you know it's it's with the lack of funding anybody who comes in early will get the the early the early moving the early movers advantage there's a lot to be to be had from that my final word is thank you for having me um i'm only i'm always excited to to talk with other african writing professionals and for public publishing professionals so thank you for inviting me and thank you to the frankfurt book fair i i and hello everybody in the audience um, i'm hoping you're having a nice day and uh, have a nice one thank you james uh, there is so much more to discuss but unfortunately our time is already up I hope our viewers enjoyed these special editions of uh, Etale Talks as much as I did. For more details on Etale Talks, you can follow Etale Publishing on Facebook or Twitter or on our Facebook. All that remains for me to say is thank you, James Morua, thank you, Frankfurt Book Fair, and thank you to everybody watching. Goodbye and stay safe.